I was gonna get all dressed up, but I didn't because I just got off work and this is my first YouTube video. So we're just diving in because I know you guys want it. And the dog is being bad, but we're gonna do what we can do. So if you're coming over here from Instagram, thanks for coming over here. If you're brand new here, this is my dog Porter. I'm Jess, a farrier in central Illinois. Talk about all kinds of things, getting vets, horse owners, farriers, all in on the conversation to get on the same page about all the fundamentals and the basics. And we're just gonna be doing more of that over here. Um, this first video is to address my most frequently asked question that I have to respond to all the time, which is, which is great, I'm not complaining. Um, how to become a farrier? How did I become a farrier? And then people that wanna become a farrier, what do I recommend they do to become a farrier? So, if that interests you, just keep watching. So this is how I became a farrier and my recommendations for how you can become a farrier too. So if that's something you're interested in, keep watching. So the first thing that I'm gonna recommend you do is get on social media, which you probably already have done um, if you've gotten this far, and watch videos like this, look at people's recommendations, kind of do your own research on all of the different things that I'm gonna give you my opinion on. Don't just take my opinion, find a bunch of opinions, come up with your own plan. The second thing I recommend doing is talking to local farriers right in your area that can kind of tell you, you know, is there room for another farrier? Do they, are they happy with the prices? Are they happy with the clientele? And just, just ask them your questions. Um, get their recommendation. I have probably gotten this, you know, five times in my area. Um, people asking, hey, is this, um, is this a good business? Um, you know, I'm from the area, I'm going to school elsewhere, you know, is there room for me to move back? And my answer is always yes. So there's a lot of work to be done, there's always room. That's what I say about my area, but make sure that your local farriers will say the same thing about your area. The third thing I'm gonna recommend you do is talk to farriers slightly outside of your future range of business so they're not your future competitors and ask them if they um, would let you ride along with them and teach you to pull a shoe. So that's going to give you a feel for what it's like to be under a horse. It's gonna give you a good skill of pulling a shoe if you don't already know how. Um, and it's gonna give you a really, it's just gonna give you a good feel for working in your area, in your climate, um, all of that. So ride along with farriers that are just slightly outside of your range. Fourth, I'm gonna say you want to come up with a list of schools and then go and visit them. So depending on how close you are to um, several different schools, maybe pick two, three, four schools to go and visit, talk to the current students, talk to the instructors, um, get a feel for how they do things and make sure they hit these three very important criteria. One, certified instructors. Make sure that the school and the instructors have really good working relationships with reputable local veterinarians. That's a must. You're going to learn so much um, from you know class time in vet clinics, um, learning how to do a good lameness exam. This is a critical part of learning to become a good farrier. So make sure that the school that you choose has good relationships with their veterinarians. Third, make sure that um, in the learning material, the instructors, the school uh, teaches anatomy, teaches biomechanics, teaches uh, hot shoeing, and then teaches trimming. So those, those four categories should be incorporated into every week. Um, so yeah, talk to the instructors, talk to current students, even ask if you could hang out for a day or two before choosing to stay at the school for five months. Um, most schools offer uh, like a, the same start date for all of their courses and then you can stay for two weeks, four weeks, on to about five months. That's how most schools, I believe, um, that I know of, that's how they operate. Once you choose a school and you get to school, max out what the school has to offer. So if you've decided you're going for this, you're gonna be a fair, stay for five months, stay for the longest course that the school will let you, put in the extra hours, really milk it for what it's worth because the opportunities you're gonna have at school and the horses you're gonna to get to work on it's gonna be a long time before you get back to um, to being able to have that much hands-on. So when you first start your business, and I cover this in another video, but 
you really you go you're going to go through a little bit of a slump when you go out on your own you're probably going to have to have a second job while you build your clientele just get your hands on as many horses as you can at school do not waste your time at school after you've maxed out what the school has to offer riding after hours practicing after hours doing everything you can get an apprenticeship um, I recommend, again, you do this outside of the zone that you're going to be working in later so that you just avoid all of that nonsense out there. I did a year apprenticeship. I definitely would have learned a ton if I did two years, but I was just as ready to go and it worked out for me. So one to two years of apprenticeship after you've maxed out what that school will offer you. And then the other question that I get all of the time that kind of drives me a little bit crazy is being a girl a bad thing? when you're a farrier? And the answer is absolutely not. Um, if anything, um, we have a leg up. Uh, if you're smaller, shorter, you're gonna fit under the horses better. Um, there is absolutely no part of being a farrier that is wrestling your horses. If you're wrestling your horses, you're gonna destroy your body and you're not doing it right. So absolutely, uh, being smaller, not having you know immense strength or anything like that, that is absolutely not a downfall intuition and gentleness with the horses is going to go a long, long way in making you a great farrier. So with all that said, that wraps up my first YouTube video. Thank you so, 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 so much if you watched the whole thing. I really hope this helps. I think I covered everything that I get asked all the time about how to become a farrier. Stay tuned for my next video on how to start and how to succeed starting your farrier business. You wanna say hi to YouTube? She can say hi. She can say hi to you too. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for being quiet. Hope you come back to my next one. Uh, enjoy.